we need to talk about bento. So what is Bento? Well, Bento is a new productivity app. I, spoiler alert, think it's a bit of a productivity workflow app that you add to existing tools. More on that as we make our way through this first look at Bento. But it's a productivity app that's been developed by and a team that uh, is spearheaded by Francesco D'Alessio of Keep Productive, who has been reviewing productivity apps for years and has seen his fair share of what works in an app, what doesn't, and maybe where the gaps are in the productivity app community. The question becomes, why do we need another productivity app? And what does Bento do that's different than say the multitude of other ones that are out there? Well, first the app Bento mentions the Bento method, which we're not gonna get into too deeply in this video, I'll refer to it. Uh, very briefly as we make our way through it, but I want you to understand that there is the bento method and then there's bentoism. Now bentoism is different. It's something you might have heard about in Yancey Strickler's book, This Could Be Our Future, and you could learn more about bentoism just by Googling it. I actually think that there are some things that you could take from bentoism and apply to this app, but not gonna get into that right now. But without further ado, let's just get to looking at the bento app. So this is Bento. Right out of the gate, you get a walkthrough from Francesco and the Bento team, and you can kind of swipe and see how packing your Bento works. You need to limit yourself to three tasks, and I do like the limitations, but that immediately puts Bento into a different productivity app category than what you might be used to. It has a lot to do with less is more and maybe qualitative productivity over quantitative productivity. So you can see that you have large, medium, and small components. Now this box doesn't have to be for the day either. It could be for the week, but we'll get into that a little bit. Once your box is packed, you apply a flow, and this is where energy levels come in, and I really do like that. I, I like the fact that this app takes into account energy levels. I'm a big believer in using your energy as a gauge as to what tasks you should be doing at certain times. So that's worth noting as well. Once you're ready, you can get right into it. So there is a final note. Now remember, Bento is not just an app. I've already mentioned that, it's a methodology. You can learn more about the method section within the app. I encourage you to do that. All right, so let's get started. So you can either create a new Bento from scratch or you can use a template. If you create a new Bento from scratch, and by the way, the, the, the look of this app is gorgeous. It, it reminds me of some of the older, uh, kind of skeuomorphic design a little bit, but I think some of that's coming back in, in this new morphic way. So it's a, it's an, it's a beautiful app to look at. Functionality wise, let's dig, dig into it and see how it works functionality wise. So we're gonna create a new bento from scratch here, okay? Now there are three different ways, three different workflows you can apply. There's eat that frog, which is, you know, popularized by Brian Tracy. Uh, where you do a large task first, the task that's going to require the most energy, then you do the medium-sized task and then a small task. The other is you could do what they call climb the summit, which I actually really like, the idea of doing a medium task first, then a large task, and then a small task. Or if you're like me and you're a night owl, you're probably going to want to do the last option, which is small, slow burn, small, medium, and large. And that's what I'm going to do. We're going to name this bento, um, we'll just call it, and we're going to use this in accordance with time crafting. So I'm going to actually use the time crafting method with this, which is my time crafting philosophy. I'm recording this on a Tuesday. So we're going to Tuesday, my theme day is training day. So I'm just going to call it training day. And this is where you can incorporate things like a Pomodoro with it. So I'm actually going to incorporate a Pomodoro into this. I'm going to say it's 25 minutes and I'm going to make it the small task. And then when you scroll down, I'm just going to go back up and then that's it. So now I'm going to go to my medium task. You could also swipe and do your large task next. And that's what I'm gonna do. So my large task is going to be, uh, let's say map out procrastination course, mini course actually. Which is frankly still a large task. So let's say if I wanna do 25, I'll say 90 minutes uh, is probably good enough for this. And then I'm gonna go swipe left and do my medium task. And my medium task for today will be to, um, let's say I'm gonna work on, actually, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do, do uh, podcast show notes. Probably better say write. 
All right. And I'm going to say that's going to take me probably about 45 minutes. That sounds about right. Okay. Now that that's done, you can see there it is. The training day. I've got check in with coaching clients, write podcast show notes and map out procrastination mini course. I'm not going to show you how this works yet. I, what I want to do is I want to go up to the top right and look at settings. So you can see there's dark mode. You could change the theme too, by the way, which is kind of nice. I'm going to go with that theme. Haptics are available, of course, and audio is available. Now there is the community and you can join the community down here. Of course, there's Twitter, uh, Discord, YouTube, all that stuff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start working on something. Now, again, I'm using the slow burn, which means I'm going to work on the smallest task first, which is checking in with coaching clients. Hit the arrow and then you start the timer and you just start working. Basically, the idea behind this is that you're kind of setting it, you're, you're timing your tasks, you're being intentional by doing less stuff, and hopefully you're gonna do that less stuff better. All right, we're gonna use some of these templates. So the templates are nice because there's the shutdown template. There's an admin template. So these are based, I would say, different modes that you might wanna be in. So if you're using uh, time crafting as a methodology, you might wanna say, hey, it's my admin day, kind of like what I did with training day. This would this would fit into that category. Journaling, maybe there's some steps behind that, right? Like it's a different template or workflow there. Morning, there's another one. Work pause, there's another one. And you can have as many bentos as you want. So if it's going to be like climb the summit, I'm going to go like, um, let's say it's uh, week one of the month. And then if we swipe left, you got training day. So you can actually like use this alongside with, you could even use it with like say monthly theme. So if I'm going to do, let's say I do the procrastination course. And of course there, there is a limit to how much you can type in. So I'll just put like pro mini, I'll just do like mini course. I don't know that this is something you would use this for, but you could add like the different tasks. And again, medium, large, you can also swap them. And by the way, notice how the arrows are different and you can change your workflow as well. So you can change it. So if you change it, let's say I'm going to go to eat that frog instead, all of a sudden it's moved. Same thing with here. If I'm going to go like for the mini course, just hold down just to the left. You can either reset it. The task will be reopened. The timers will be reset or, and again, just to the left, change the workflow. So we'll go to slow burn and there you have it. So there's a lot to like about this. And I'm going to go to the theme that I want, which is this one. And then you could see like, there's my new theme. This app fills a gap. I don't think it's your primary. I think it is a secondary app that allows you to kind of pull things out of your larger task app or a larger paper planner and have a, a place to focus on these three tasks today. You can't have any more than that. Um, you could change the time constraints around it as, as we've noticed uh, you know, you can actually change. So if I wanted to, I could change this to 120 minutes, let's say. And then I go, the key is to make sure when you do that, that you actually hit the arrow to go back up so it saves it because then all of a sudden it goes up. So you could change the time, you could change the size of it, but you cannot add any. And I do like the constraints that are built in because there's lots of flexibility around each bento that you can make. Okay, so the big thing that I want you to keep in mind here is that I don't think that Bento is an app for somebody who is going to use it for their primary productivity app. And I know that's not what they've designed it to be. It is more of a, I would say, a uh, a focus app, uh, an intentional productivity app. So in other words, if you want to highlight or draw your attention to some of the tasks that are on your bigger to-do list or your bigger project management tools or you're working in a collaborative environment and you want to take things out of, say, Asana or ClickUp or Monday, or wherever you're working on things as a group, and highlight them for yourself. This is where I think Bento fits in, because it's not just an app, but they've got this uh, this framework, this method, that helps you kind of decide, okay, here's a large, a medium, and a small task, and whichever way you want to tackle it, and that is going to be helpful to try to be more intentional with your, your time. If you've been following my work for a while, you know that my concept of productivity, my definition is it's what are your intentions and how are you going to pay attention to them? Bento will definitely help you with that. So if you're not using something already that kind of fills that gap, and there are plenty of things that can fill that gap, including, let's say, Analog by uh, Ugmunk, or even the Daily Driver that I have on my website, Paper Tools might fill this gap for you already. And if that's the case, 
then I don't think that Bento is going to be for you per se. But if you want to bring in more digital into that portion, that gap that exists, uh, something that pulls things, three things, out of your uh, your daily tasks, your weekly. And again, you can use the templates. There's lots of versatility and flexibility built into Bento that I really appreciate. And the more you use it, the more you'll figure out how to leverage that flexibility. But if you're already using a paper tool or something that fills that gap, then I don't necessarily believe that Bento is going to add anything to your uh, productivity. But if you're not using something, there's a lot to like about Bento. I think that you could use the getting things done methodology with Bento. You can use time crafting with it. You can obviously use the Bento method with it. So if you're already using a different methodology, then Bento can work for you. Now, there is one other thing that I think you need to understand that may create some friction when you're using Bento. If you don't know how to break down your projects or your work into those large, medium, and small tasks, then you're going to struggle with it. And you're going to be <laughs> biased in many cases to blame the application and not you know the fundamentals frankly a large task needs to be broken down a bit more let me give you an example if i made my large task make youtube video that is going to be something that is going to require a lot of time maybe up to the two hour uh, maximum that you get with a large task and i think it's gonna take me longer than two hours to do it you need to understand what large what the bandwidth of large is for you for me it might be shoot the video it might be edit the video. Shooting might not take as long. If you have a fundamental understanding of what a large task looks like to you that you can complete and a medium task that you can complete and a small task that you can complete, then Bento is going to help you out with that. But if you don't have those fundamentals in place, then I think you're going to struggle with that. And that's not the fault of the app. That's just a flaw in the fundamentals, in the ability to understand how much bandwidth you have to complete certain tasks because you want to complete things, right? So if you have a large task, you want to be able to get that done. You want to be able to say, hey, I got it done. I I finished those things and now I can go back, go back and recalibrate with my bigger project management tool, et cetera. And maybe you want to use the time framing as an example. 90 to 120 minutes is a large task. 45 to 60 minutes is a medium and anything from 5 to 25 is a is a small task. You get to decide that. And that's the great thing about this app. There's some flexibility in there. Those are my thoughts on Bento. I think it's a really useful app that fits in a very particular niche or gap. If you don't want to add another app to this to your workflow, then Bento probably won't be for you because you may have a lot of other things going on right now, especially if you've got a project management tool and a habit tracking app and then a journaling app and a note taking app. Adding something like Bento may not may, may complicate things. It may make things more complicated than, than you need them to be. That's where paper might come in. For a first look at Bento, I'm impressed. And it's really interesting to see Francesco enter the app space that he's been, you know, kind of uh, commenting on uh, for so long because now he's in it. Much like how Charlie Gilkey and Productive Flourishing have built their app, and now they're in it. it. Makes me wonder if it's something maybe I should do. Who knows? We'll see. Never say never, right? Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to leave a like. Uh, and if you have any comments on what your experience is with Bento, or maybe an app that you're using that fills the gap that Bento could fill, uh, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.